Mrs. Katie and Keeping It Real in the Gospel. And I am here with Pastor Kelsey Brooks Jr., right? Senior. Senior. Yes, senior. All right, he's senior. <laughs> um, listen, I enjoy service today from 7.30 to 8.30. I, listen, he may have a new member, so I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to have to, you know, get up in the morning at 7.30 to 8.30. Pastor Brooks, tell us a little bit about your service. Tell us a little bit about your ministry. Uh, definitely, uh, it's an honor, you know, third service to be able to get an interview from you. It's definitely an honor that means God is working and we, you know, we're doing what God has called us to do. One of the things about our ministry is that we try to get out of it in an hour. We do everything in an hour. I'm very structured on time. I believe that you can do everything and let God have his way and still have a hours are from 7.30 to 8, 8.30 a.m., uh, at 7 o'clock sharp, we have intercessory prayer here. So when you come in here, you could feel God God allow us in his presence because we have already prayed it up. And I don't really believe in God, you can come in our presence. No, God has allowed us to come. So and therefore, I always believe in having prayer first, having people. And you come in here, you, you, hey, you don't have to fall on your knees, but you should be saying a prayer. Whatever you need God to do in your life. So we start at 7 sharp. And then we go right to uh, praise and worship at 725. We we have our opening prayer. And when you come here at 730, we praise and worship. Yeah, I, I, I got here about 725. <laughs> and I'm like, they already started. Yeah. So I, I was told by uh, Ms. Lee, the psalmist, she said, if you get here at 730, you're late. late yeah, so we late. get here at 730, you're late. So I want to thank God. I was on time today. Yeah, you was on time. You I was, was on time. time. <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm going to be on time for <laughs> something today. So I, I was on time. You know, tell us a little bit how you got here. What? Well, I'm born and raised in Delray. Uh, I grew up under my grandfather, Bishop, Je Bishop Joseph Sr., Leonard Joseph Sr., National Church of God, Pentecostal. I raised Pentecostal. I uh, fellowship with Baptist, Primitive Baptist, Missionary Baptist. So God have put me in a lot of places to season me. Uh, I had knew when I was in college I would never play pro football. A lot of people don't even know that about me. But I tell them the story and they'd be amazed. When I was in college, I, I aspired to be an NFL football player. I was good enough. But when I was in college, going into my senior year, God had already told me I wasn't going to do that. And so I tried to fight it and fight it. I never forget my auntie prophesied over about six of us one day in church. I was looking around, not me, not me. And through all the stuff I've been through, here I am. And God gave me a vision. But I, I stayed still. I stayed still and I stayed where I was at until God released me. And God would never let, like, I'm gonna be honest. God, it was people, hey, what you think about Pastor and I church, blah, 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 in the organization I was in at the time. And I would say, no, nah, God ain't leading me to do that. Okay. And when, when I felt that I had did my 10 year old at St. John Primitive Baptist with Pastor Rollins and Elder Kenny D. Dukes Jr. I told him that God was leading me in a different direction and this is what God had called me to do and he gave me the name of the church which is Praise and Worship City Church. And uh, when, I start, when I started out, it was amazing because when God condition you for something, right. he always opened up the doors for you. So at first, it, you know, I think kind of people was kind of like, okay, let's see what it's gonna offer. And then we came in and if I'm gonna be, the first week I had 20 people in. Okay. Last week we had Minister Lowell Pye here. Okay. It was the grand celebration, and I when I tell you, he ministered in this house, and we had things set up at some time. And I told the church in my sermon, sometimes we set our we set our goals and what we want to do, but it's God that direct the paths. And he came in his house and ministered. We had twenty five people last week. God set the atmosphere in his house. He got up there and ministered. He said, I like services like this. It's not all the commercial stuff. That's it. He ministered to this house last week of life. Listen, and he ministered to me because it made me think about how good God really is. Yeah. How really. And so when I started, it didn't, it didn't seem like it was going to work. But every week, somebody kept going. And that's a testament to God. God. Because a lot of young preachers can't say what I say right now. A lot of young preachers, God ain't blessed in Delray to start off on their own. 
is with with the amount of people you have. With and, the amount of people. And a full band and, and, and a and a praise and we worship. We don't even have a full band. I you don't, don't need no keyboard. I don't even need a keyboard. Need Listen, a keyboard. we was in here last week. God is my aunt witness. We was in here last week. Just like today. You couldn't even tell when you had no one. You, you don't need I'm telling you from me to you. You don't need I, y'all church in Yeah, we church and that, and, and I and we I don't want to say pride, but I I pride myself on people having a, a spiritual awakening when they come. And another reason why I'm glad God gave me the vision to start early is because I know Sunday is a family day. If you come in here and worship with me for an hour. Listen, people just not going to Sunday school. I'm interviewing with you. They going ahead to nine thirty. They have nine thirty Sunday school, and they got to go to eleven o'clock service. That's yes, it. I've been out since eight eight forty eight thirty. People came here. They fellowship. You see how hard it is to get out that door. I'm waiting for people to stand in the back and give me a hug. They still up here. Fell That's what this about. It's not about me. It's about God and ministry. Now, it, I'm, I'm gonna tell you one thing I like. When you step down at that pool pit and you shake everybody's hand upon leaving, I think that really said something. That's a statement piece. Because at the end of the day, you are saying to me, you know what? Bless you, and I'm covering you for your week. Yeah. So until we meet again, yeah, I'm covering, covering you. you for your week. And I'm covering you for your week. Yeah. And and I, I I was like, wow, that 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 means something. When I see a pastor, they say, you know what? I'm going to shake your hand on the way out. That's a blessing to me that you shake my hand and say, you know what? I'm good. So when I say my prayer, I'm like, I'm good. Because you know what? When I'm driving along these highways, I'm good. Yeah. I the pastor's going to cover me. Yeah, I covered you. Yeah. Okay, so when I'm, I'm doing everything, I'm running up and down the street, I'm covered. Because the pastor, yeah. he blessed me upon, bless you. You know what? That did something to me today because I have said that at home. You need to come out the pulpit. And shake our hands and let us know one you appreciate us for coming. Let's At seven thirty in the morning, you appreciate you for coming. <laughs> and then on two, <laughs> you saying bless you. I appreciate you. And, and that's real. And and too often, I think pastors get caught up in themselves. You can't preach to nobody if ain't nobody here to listen to. You. Yeah, preach to the pews. Thing yeah. is really hard. That get old real quick. Get old, you can't hear nothing. I get silent. Silent like God ain't it. And I believe that, and I always say, when I'm in here, I don't know if you heard me say it, everybody needs a hug. I don't care what they've been through. Evangelism. Those are three principles I built. It's, that's what the ministry is built on. Number one, you got to pray. You got to communicate with God. How else you going to be able to lead people if you ain't talking right. to God? Number two, you got to be a servant to the community, to the people. You know how many hurting people it is? I hear these screams right around this church. Yes. Ministry is not in the church. I think a lot of our church is so traditional, and they have got to a foundation where they, they don't need, uh, uh, you don't need folks now, but you really do. Because yeah. a lot of your people are hurting. You're not reaching out to them. And, and I'm going to be honest. A lot of, a lot of preachers are check-driven. Say it. And I'm not bashing nobody. I'm just saying, when you check driven, you can't do ministry. Because see, yeah. whether I get an offer or not, I'm going to be back here next week and we still going to go forward. Trying to get us to see. I believe you got to be led. My granddad always told me this. You got to let the spirit lead you. Yep. Yeah. When you get to lead in the spirit, it, it'll never work. People don't come here because they like me. People don't come because you like me. People don't come here because they like me. They may like me, but understand what I'm saying. They come here for the spiritual experience. That's it. That's it. They like me. Understand, but they ain't coming. They ain't feeling people. Oh, I know Kelsey. I'm going to go. No, 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 no. They come here for the spiritual experience. And, 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 and that's what church is missing. Is a spiritual experience because listen, you, you know, you're going out, you, you're interviewing people. This is a business, and my business is spreading the gospel. Yeah, I'm gonna help you any way you need to be. Thank happy. you, thank you. Any way you need me, you call GT Promotions, and I'm gonna say it in front of my people. I am here to help you. Anytime you need me, you need us to help you with flyers and 
Keep the word out. I want to walk in here and say I have nowhere to sit. Yeah. So I'm going to mark my bench so <laughs> that I have my seat about your service. Tell us okay. about your times. Well, the service, the service, we, we haven't started our midweek yet. Our midweek service will be mid uh, end of end of June, end of June. Okay. We'll start a midweek service. It should be a Thursday or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Not traditional. It'll be an hour long. Okay. Nice Bible studies. Uh, what we're gonna do is we know you're getting off of work, so we're gonna have refreshments for you. If you can't yes. go home and cook, we'll have refreshments like we did this morning. We want to make sure that you we understand your time is important. We appreciate you coming, so we'll have a little snack for you, so you won't be hungry. It'll be an hour, forty five minutes that type study. of thing. But on Sunday morning, we're here at seven. I'm here early anyways. I'm here at 645. Early morning. I'm here at 645. We get the doors open. And uh, by 7 o'clock, whoever come in first, they start praying. And from 7 to 725, this house is praying, praying, praying. We start praise and worship at 725. Service do say 730, but if you 730, you late. So you was early today. Thank God. 725 to no longer than 8 30. I'm happy about what God is doing. We do also have refreshments here when you leave, and we always have a guest bag. I don't, did you get that guest bag? I didn't get it, but I Okay, no, I got you. I got you. We got a guest bag for all our visitors. Certain things you need in church tissue for the crime. We gave you hand sanitizer for the germs, because you know you shape your band in church. <laughs> we give you a peppermint for your mouth, keep yes, your mouth yes. fresh and clean. We also give you a a uh, little, little notebook to take notes, and we also give you a pen. We give you the pen in different. We put a pencil, not a pen, mm -hmm. in different colors because God don't look at color. And when he writes something, he can always re erase your past. My God. So we put a pencil in there instead of a pen. So that's one of the gift things we like to do to show that we, you know, we can. I, listen, I'm a people's person, and ministry is about people. And that's why I'm so happy. There have been a lot of opportunities for me to go in somebody else's city, but I'm so happy and I'm grateful to God that he never opened up doors, but he left me.